so I would be growing my my crop here in weeks like this, which has all those traits, but maybe it's a little bit shorter. And We're gonna do a lot of that and I'll see you when we're done. Why is this stuff floating away if I sit here and drop it and it's barely moving because I'm creating a draft? You know, why? This is a wet paper towel. So on the leak seeds here, I only see three that didn't go. This one looks like it's just a dud, so that, that's a loss. This is my original origami seed packet design. Okay. Oh, that's great. I decided to name that apple, and I named it Bite Me for all the people who said it couldn't be done and who propagate this idea that you can't grow an apple from seed, or if you get a good apple, it's going to be like one in thousands uh, that are going to be even edible. That is not true. It's been proven wrong by lots of people now. And so it begins. Bite me. The first graft we're going to cover is a cleft graft. So with a cleft graft, you take the stalk, you split it in half, and then you insert a wedge-shaped piece into the split. Put one right here, and we'll just hope for the best. The knife is making a slash this way. So... Okay, let's see if that fits. You really got to stuff this thing in there. And wrap it, or you could drive a nail through it, that's fine too. Cut this back to this main branch here, put one on. Cut this back, put one on there. Cut this off, put one there, put one up here, etc. And keep the branch structure, because this branch structure took two years to grow already. But again, you can experiment like this as long as you're following the rules. You know, we know we need good cambial contact. Slip that in, done. Same thing on the other side. There's no such thing as too much on this. Never hurts to coat the scion. Just stop burning brush. Stop it. Stop burning your brush into ash. It's so easy to make charcoal by the methods I use that, you know, all you need is some water and a match. It's almost that simple. The side of my head's getting really hot. All right, let's talk for a minute about biochar and why you should do this char it and bury it in your soil and see what happens and hopefully you'll have as good results as I've been having. I just want as much as I can possibly get at this point. Stop! Stop it! These are my apple seedlings, and this row here is definitely going to have some strongly red-fleshed apples. I mean, just look at the color on those leaves. Wow. I'm going to take these, cut them off, and graft them onto dwarfing rootstock. So the dwarfing rootstock will keep the trees at about 8 feet tall because I'm planting them really close. They're planted at about 12 inches apart in the row, so it's like super close in rows 6 feet apart. I'm going to cut in and then slice. I'm not just splitting, I'm actually slicing the wood. Do that on both sides. And then we fit them together. So 
some help. Uh, Zach came and helped a couple times and he brought his friend Devin and they helped a bunch with uh, terracing this hillside. To terraces. <laughs> terracing. terracing. Marvelous. Dumb. Dumb. Okay. You good? No? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want it? Just give it. Line that bed out. This okay. ends here. And start digging that. Second wind. Check <laughs> that off. Power <laughs> Rangers. <laughs> or you could be like, what is it, Captain Planet? Yeah. The power of Planet. And it's Wait. not a caffeine. <laughs> you can do it. I am triumphant. Second row, 52 trees, only eight trees left to plant. Now this marks the beginning of a new series of crosses using maypole. And maypole is a red fleshed apple that does have very, very strong red leaves. Project was kind of neglected. You could see there's a lot of weeds behind me. I didn't really keep up with weeding last summer. I didn't keep up with watering that well. pulling the wire off and getting it out of my way, but I'm going to come back and take all the tags and wires and move them further up the tree. This phenomenon here is called burr knot. Here, here, here. Look at that too. It's also a common entry site for borers. Voles are also called meadow mice. They're short fat rodents. Look at that. Scraping is an underused technique, I think. It's extremely effective and extremely handy. You know, the sharpening isn't an end in itself. I don't really care if it's amazingly super sharp. I just care that it's sharp enough to work. This isn't really just to remove the wire edge, although there, there is one. And the recommendations on how far back this should be ground, as far as I can tell, are based on whether or not and how much this has a hollow like this. Timber. You know, a lot of people have kind of a knee-jerk response to cutting trees down in general, and I think that's really a mistake. You should be thinking about context. So this is when I moved here um, 11 years ago, which doesn't seem like a very long time ago. 21, 22, 23, 24 years old. And there are plenty of surrounding trees that are, you know, healthier better growing trees and I'll leave those to grow. And they'll have more room, more light, more water, more food because this tree's not here anymore. So following this equation, what someone means if they say they're gonna chop hard is that they're gonna increase the momentum. So we can increase the momentum to chop deeper into the wood, but remember that momentum is the product of mass and velocity together. But if you're standing in the woods next to a tree with any given ax in your hand, the mass is fixed. Velocity is what we can change, how fast we swing the ax. There's energy embodied in the ax head and that's really doing the cutting. So you want to think of it more as like throwing or whipping. Think of it as a, this is a whip and you're whipping the head into the wood.
You hear that sound? Oh yeah! So I'm gonna do this one from the upper side. I'm gonna start skinning along the edge of the hoof right here. Slice open this on the bottom. That's kind of like a sheath. Then reach in here and pull this out. This is what you want. This is good sinew. There we go. This is one that I forged out of a piece of old car leaf spring. Just start trying to get this thing a little flatter. Looks like I got it pretty dry with the scraper on the beam, so that's not a problem. Yay, it's leather. We'll, uh, I guess we'll revisit this when it's that time. Especially if you make a longer one, you, know, you can really work the thing. And if you want the grain smooth like this, you just make sure that you always fold it the other way. Uh, there's some that have cork, mm. so they don't mess up or dent this side. Snack. Oh, sweet. Wow. Let's just see what it tastes like. Whoa. The flavor is unexciting, very pedestrian. Old Egremont russets hanging on up here. Dude. Hard. Sweet. Mm. Incredible flavor. Mm. The flavor of this apple is simply incredible. It was found on a local homestead and named Pomo Cine. I think it is. I think most people would be very happy with the flavor of this apple. It's very rich. It's got plenty of acid, but it's not overwhelming. It's balanced with uh, plenty of sugar. I would say it almost has like a fruit smoothie, like a tropical smoothie type of a flavor. Well, number one is the round handle. I really dislike the round handle. I want my tip more in line with the, the handle, so I'm gonna bring that down. Let's mess it up. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make cheese glue. Cheese glue, also known as casein glue. I know this looks ridiculous, but it, it could work. <laughs> Squish this. Pack those wood shavings together. Now this is the one that I just filed, and I filed it completely square. I didn't dress it or anything like that. But as you can see, it's very sharp, and it's taking really nice shavings. Yeah, so that's it. I, I like this knife way better now already. <laughs> Let's not talk too much.